illustration of electromagnetic wave how to represent an electromagnetic wave pictorially. So, I have told you that a time varying electric field is producing the time varying magnetic field and the time varying magnetic field in turn produces the time varying electric field. If it is so, how they are traveling, how they are propagating. So, it was uh, told that in an electromagnetic wave electrical vector, magnetic vector they are propagating in a direction perpendicular to the electric field vector and magnetic field vector. That means, in an electromagnetic wave the direction of propagation electric field vector and magnetic field vector they are mutually perpendicular to each other. Then how to represent it graphically or pictorially? Graphically let us consider an electromagnetic wave which is propagating along the positive z direction. Let us consider this is a z axis positive z axis and this is the x axis. This is x axis and this is the y axis. Now, how an electromagnetic wave is propagating? The wave is uh, considered to be propagating along which direction? Positive z direction. In an electromagnetic wave according to Maxwell, the electrical vector, magnetic vector must be perpendicular to each other and they must, uh, must and should be perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. I have shown you even in the capacitor case when we are studying about the displacement current. The electric field is going into the board and magnetic field is lying in the plane of the board in circular pattern. That means, they are perpendicular to each other. So, they are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Then how to represent it means, let us consider the wave is propagating along which direction? Positive z direction and electrical vector is along the x axis. Therefore, the electrical wave is uh, drawn like this this is the representation of electrical wave which is sinusoidal and the magnetic wave is like this which is also sinusoidal. This is the magnetic wave, this is the magnetic wave which is along the z y axis, magnetic wave is along which axis? y axis this is the representation of magnetic wave and this is the representation of which wave? This is the representation of electrical wave. If you see the electrical wave and the magnetic wave they are perpendicular to each other. They are perpendicular to what? They are perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation. They are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation. That means, this is a electrical wave is moving along the x axis up and down like this. Whereas, uh, this is uh, let us consider this is z axis, this is x axis and this is y axis. So, this is z axis along which a wave is propagating, this is x axis along which the electrical vector is vibrating and this is a wave along which magnetic vector is vibrating. Is it clear? So, this and this the electrical wave and magnetic wave are oscillating in two perpendicular planes. Is it clear or not? This, uh, this is in uh, xz plane whereas, this is in yz plane. The magnetic wave is in yz plane, electrical wave is in xz plane and wave is propagating along z axis. I can show you like this. <coughs> How to visualize an electromagnetic wave? To visualize an electromagnetic wave, let us consider an example of how a snake is moving and how a dolphin motion is. Just recollect them. You know a snake will move in this way, yes sir, a snake will move like this by curling its body and you have noticed the dolphin motion also. The dolphin will be moving up and down like this in water. So, this is the motion of the snake and this is the motion of a dolphin. Now, club both of them. So, here snake is moving in this direction, even the dolphin is also moving in the same direction. Now, club the dolphin motion and the snake motion, then what kind of motion you are getting? So, if you observe they are moving like this. So, if you see at any instant of time the snake is moving its uh, body parts are oscillating like this whereas, the, the body parts of a dolphin is like this. So, the oscillations are perpendicular to each other and they are propagating in positive z direction. So, clubbing the dolphin motion in the snake motion we can visualize the electromagnetic wave. So, how they will be means they will be like this. This is the uh, electromagnetic wave motion is it clear or not? They are perpendicular to electrical wave is perpendicular to magnetic wave and they are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. So, finally, an electromagnetic wave is one in which 
electric vector, magnetic vector, or electrical wave, magnetic wave will be mutually perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. And few things that we have to understand regarding this electromagnetic wave is here what is the phase me phase between electrical wave and magnetic wave they will ask. What is the phase difference between electrical wave and magnetic wave in an electromagnetic wave? A most important theoretical question. So nine, most of us will expect that as I told you electrical vector, as I told you electrical vector and magnetic vector are perpendicular to each other, you may think the phase difference between them is 90. But that is the wrong answer. If you see here, by the time the electrical wave complete one oscillation, the magnetic wave is also, this is electrical wave and this is magnetic wave. So by the time it completes one, of one oscillation, this is also completing one oscillation. So therefore, always they are in phase. The time period of this wave is equal to the time period of this wave. Therefore, there is no phase difference between electrical wave and magnetic wave. They are perpendicular to each other, but there is no phase difference between electrical wave and magnetic wave in an electromagnetic wave. So, in EM wave, in EM wave, the phase difference between, the phase difference between electric wave and magnetic wave is electric wave and magnetic wave is, magnetic wave is zero. It's a very important point. Don't think that the, the phase difference between electrical wave and magnetic wave is 90. They are perpendicular is true, but they are in phase. That means by the time electrical wave complete one wave, magnetic wave also completes one wave or their time periods are same. Time periods being same, phase difference will be zero or they are in phase. Electrical wave is in phase with magnetic wave. Okay, this is uh, one of the most important point that we have to remember. Then how to represent this electromagnetic wave? So they are propagating along which direction? In this example, they are propagating along z-axis. That to positive z-axis. And they are, if you see the wave, it is a sinusoidal wave. In first year, we have studied that the displacement of a sinusoidal wave is given by y is equal to a sin kx minus omega t. This is the equation of a wave which is traveling along the positive x direction. Here minus is there means positive x direction. If plus is there means the wave is traveling along the negative x direction. I told you the reason why it is a negative, why we have to take positive for negative x direction and negative for positive x direction first year. Yes or no? So, so just refer to those things. Then you will understand why to take minus for positive direction and plus for negative direction. So remember, when a wave travels along positive direction, here we have to take negative sign. If it travels along negative direction, here we have to take positive sign. Here x says that the wave is propagating along x direction. Suppose if I keep z here, what it says? The wave is propagating along z direction. Negative sign says that moving along positive z direction. If I take like this, the wave is propagating along negative z direction. Is it clear? If you see here, electric wave is propagating along what direction? Propag propagating along positive z direction. Therefore, I have to write like this. <coughs> EX is equal to representation of electrical wave in electromagnetic wave. EX is equal to, EX is equal to, here what is this A stands for? Amplitude or the maximum displacement. So here maximum value is this. Maximum value of this is nothing but I will take it as E naught. And here I will take it as B naught. So maximum value of electrical vector is E naught, maximum value of magnetic vector is B naught. Then EX can be written as E naught into sine K, it is propagating along positive Z direction, therefore KZ minus omega T. In the similar way, the magnetic wave is represented by, magnetic wave is along Y direction, therefore BY. BY is equal to B naught into sine, it is also traveling along positive z axis only, therefore kz minus omega t. If you see these two clearly, this term is same for both electrical wave and magnetic wave. Here minus there means here should, here also it must be minus. Here plus means here must be plus. This is z means this must be z. Okay. So this is along x direction, this is along y direction, wave is along z axis, wave is propagating along z axis. 
This is the representation of electrical wave and magnetic wave in an electromagnetic wave. And theoretically, Maxwell has established a relationship between the speed of light and the peak values of electric field and magnetic field. And what is that relation is B0 is equal to E0 divided by C. A very important relation for calculating the problems. B0 is equal to E0 by C. That means if I know the peak value of electric field, then I am able to calculate the peak value of magnetic field. Or else I can also write it as C is equal to E0 divided by B0. So just recollect the previous chapter topics. That means in a, while I am discussing about the cyclotron, I told you that when there is a charged particle moving in the combined electric and magnetic field, it travels undeviated. And that condition I call it as velocity selector condition. When a charged particle having a charge Q moves in combined cross electric and magnetic field and it travels undeviated, then the condition for undeviation is given by velocity of that charged particle should be equal to electric field by magnetic field, yes or no. Here it is, there is no charged particle here. It is an uncharged particle, light wave, electromagnetic radiation is chargeless. So electromagnetic wave cannot be deflected by electric field and it cannot be deflected by magnetic field. If that is the case, electric wa electromagnetic wave is traveling undeviated. As it is traveling undeviated, it should satisfy the velocity selector condition and that condition is here it is V is the speed of the charged particle, here that is nothing but the speed of the light wave. Speed of light wave is equal to or electromagnetic wave is equal to E naught divided by B naught or I can rearrange it like this, is it clear? If you have forgotten this condition, you can recollect this velocity selector condition or simply you remember in our alphabets we will be having A, B, C, D, E. I want the relationship between B, C and E. Remove this and this. Now put equal to sign here. So I can write E is equal to B C or E naught is equal to E naught is equal to B naught into C or C is equal to E naught by B naught. Just for uh, logical remembrance you can think like this. Okay. If you have forgotten the relationship between the speed of light, electric field vector ma maximum value and magnetic field vector maximum value, then you can recollect it like this. The speed of electromagnetic wave is related with the peak values of electric field and magnetic field by the relation C is equal to E0 by B0. Understood? <coughs> now, if you see this equation or first come to this first year equation what we studied. This is the displacement of a wave. If this is the displacement of a wave, then what is the speed of the wave? The speed of the wave is given by the formula V is equal to omega by K. Have you remembered it or not? In first year, many times we have discussed this. The speed of a wave is given by V is equal to omega by K. Then what is the speed of this electromagnetic wave? Speed of electromagnetic wave is given by speed of electromagnetic wave is given by what is the speed of electromagnetic wave? It is nothing but C. Yes or no? The speed of light. C is equal to omega by K. Omega by K. I have to write it like this where omega is nothing but angular frequency which you can write it as 2 pi into nu where nu is the frequency of the oscillating charged particle or the source of electromagnetic radiation and k is called propagation constant or wave constant all these things we have studied in first year only where this k is equal to 2 pi by lambda very 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 important terms omega is equal to 2 pi f or here we are replacing that frequency term f with the free new term. So you can in higher standards f is to be replaced with new. New refers to frequency here. Omega is equal to 2 pi nu and k is equal to 2 pi by lambda. This is called wave constant or propagation constant and this is called angular frequency of the wave. Now according to this c is equal to what I can say 2 pi nu divided by 2 pi by lambda. This implies c is equal to nu lambda or f lambda which we studied in first year. C is equal to nu lambda. This is the speed of this electromagnetic wave. So speed of electromagnetic wave is nothing but omega angular frequency divided by wave constant k or propagation constant k. Understood this. Then as an electromagnetic wave is carrying the energy with it, 
what is the energy here at associated with this electrical vector and magnetic vector. So the energy associated with the electric vector. In, in the electrostatics, we have studied the electrical energy density and magnetic energy density we have studied in the, cap uh, in the case of inductor. If there is a capacitor, in between the capacitor plates, there is an electric field. Then what is the energy density here? Electrical energy density is given by the formula half epsilon naught E square, which we have derived also mathematically. In the case of inductor, there will be a magnetic field. There will be a magnetic field. And that inside that magnetic field, magnetic energy density will be there, which is given by UB is equal to B square divided by 2 mu naught b square divided by 2 mu naught. Is it clear? So if it is the, in the case of electromagnetic wave, what is the energy density associated with only with electrical wave means half epsilon naught E naught square. Electrical energy density maximum value is equal to half epsilon naught E naught square. Similarly, energy maximum energy density associated with the magnetic wave is given by according to that formula which we derived in previous chapters i can write it as b naught square by 2 mu naught this is the maximum en electrical energy density this is the maximum magnetic energy density in general what is the energy density of electromagnetic wave either i can select this term or i can select this term if not the energy density associated with the the energy density associated with the electromagnetic wave is nothing but half of this plus half of this because here in an electromagnetic wave electrical wave is there and magnetic wave is there and they are in phase therefore half of this energy and half of this energy therefore energy density of electromagnetic wave is given by half of this is 1 by 4 epsilon naught e naught square plus 1 by 4 b naught square by mu naught this is a very important formula for the competitive part of examination. So what is the energy density of electromagnetic wave means? Either I can use half epsilon naught E naught square or B square by B naught square by 2 mu naught or else 1 by 4 epsilon naught E naught square plus 1 by 4 B naught square by mu naught. This is a formula for energy density associated with an electromagnetic wave. Is it clear? So in an, electro, in an electromagnetic wave, electrical wave and magnetic wave are mutually perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. And the electrical wave and magnetic wave are, they are always in phase. Though electrical wave and magnetic wave are perpendicular to each other, they are in phase, very important term. And the representation will be like this. It's very simple. So if wave is propagating along Z axis, then electric field will be along, either along X or Y. If it is along X, this will be along y. If this is along y, this will be along x. Okay. So, if a wave propagates along positive direction, I have to take minus sign. If the wave propagates along the negative direction, I have to take plus sign here. Understood? And this electromagnetic wave is carrying what along with it? It is carrying the momentum as well as the energy with it. The momentum associated with the electromagnetic wave, I have given you the formula u divided by c. C being very large, momentum associated with the electromagnetic wave will be very less. Therefore, the pressure exerted by the radiation on the surface will be very small. And I have, according to the American scientists, the value of the radiation pressure is found to be 7 into 10 to the power of minus 6 Newton per meter square. And they will exert a force of 7 into 10 to the power of minus 9 Newton over an area of 10 centimeters square, which is very small. That's why we cannot experience the force exerted by the radiation. What is meant by radiation pressure? The pressure exerted by the radiation falling on a given surface is said to be the radiation pressure, which is important for the board one mark questions. Okay. So this is about our electromagnetic waves. Next, we'll study about the electromagnetic spectrum. Is it clear? And based on this, definitely they will be asking the two mark problem, relationship between B naught, E naught and C. So I can write C is equal to E naught by B naught or B naught is equal to E naught by C. If you have forgotten, just recollect the velocity selector condition, V is equal to E by B. In the case of electromagnetic wave, velocity is nothing but speed of light, therefore V is to be replaced with C. Then C is equal to E naught by B naught. Okay. 
This is about the electromagnetic wave. So, what we discussed so far, we have studied about what are electromagnetic waves, how the, what is the source of electromagnetic radiation and what is the nature of electromagnetic radiation and what the electromagnetic radiation is carrying along with it. Using this electromagnetic uh, wave theory, what are the applications also we have studied. Because of the electromagnetic radiation only, nowadays we are having the communication system. In the communication, in the wireless communication system, these electromagnetic radiation plays the major role. Now, the communication what we are witnessing today is because of the development of electromagnetic theory which was proposed by Maxwell in the beginning of the 19th century, that is in the year 1887. When Heinrich Hertz has discovered the, uh, invented this uh, electromagnetic radiation, the experimental lab, later on Marconi and uh, J.C. Bose has uh, developed the electromagnetic radiation and Marconi has transported these electromagnetic radiation over kilometers of distance and succeeded in the invention of radio. And nowadays we are having different types of uh, wireless communication like uh, TV communication, radio communication or the mobile communication. That is all possible only because of the electromagnetic waves only. So this is about the electromagnetic wave and lastly we will discuss about the electromagnetic wave spectrum. Okay. The last topic in this chapter is electromagnetic spectrum. So what is meant by spectrum? Spectrum is nothing but orderly arrangement. Orderly arrangement of what? If you see the electromagnetic spectrum, we are arranging all the radiations either in the increasing order of their wavelengths or decreasing order of their wavelengths. So for a wave, if I consider an electromagnetic wave or any other wave, if we consider a wave, for a wave what we are able to measure? For a wave we are able to measure the frequency, we are able to measure the wavelength or we are able to measure the speed. So three things we are able to measure, yes or no? So now, according to Einstein, we know that energy associated with the radiation or the photon is E is equal to H nu. If frequency increases, I can also write this as E is equal to C by lambda, yes or no? Since C is equal to nu lambda or C is equal to F lambda. So if you see here, if frequency increases, then wavelength energy increases, wavelength nu and lambda are inversely related with each other, lambda decreases. Now spectrum is nothing but orderly arrangement of any of these three things, either the orderly arrangement of frequency or orderly arrangement of energy or orderly arrangement of wavelength. So what is a spectrum means? A spectrum is nothing but the orderly arrangement of the wavelengths or spectrum is the orderly arrangement of energies or the spectrum is the orderly arrangement of frequencies. Orderly arrangement means either in the increasing order we can take or we can also take in the decreasing order. If I consider an electromagnetic spectrum, what is the uh, part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is first notation means visible spectrum. Later uh, we come to know about the infrared radiations and UV radiations. Slowly we came to know about radio waves, all those other type of radiations. Now coming to the electromagnetic spectrum, visible spectrum will be the first known thing and on either side of the spectrum if you consider if this is visible light, if this is visible light, <coughs> to this one we will be having uh, to the left side infrared radiations will be there, then microwaves will be there, microwaves then radio waves, radio waves. So to the right side of this visible spectrum, we will be visible light, we will be having the UV radiations, next X-rays, next gamma rays. When you move from left side to the right side, what is happening? We know that out, uh, out of visible light and UV rays, UV rays are more energetic. And compared to UV rays, X-rays are more energetic. Compared to X-rays, uh, gamma rays, X-rays are less energetic. That means when I move from left side to right side, like this if I move, what is increasing? Energy is increasing. Energy is increasing or frequency is increasing. Energy increases and frequency increases. Or else I can say that wavelength is decreasing. When I move from right to left, energy decreases frequency decreases, wavelength increases. So simply this is the representation for 
electromagnetic spectrum. So radio waves, first we can say here, long radio waves, short radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, UV rays, X-rays, gamma rays, like this. So what is meant by electromagnetic spectrum definition-wise? It is the orderly arrangement of wavelengths or it is the orderly arrangement of frequencies or it is the orderly arrangement of energies. The orderly arrangement of frequencies or energies or wavelengths is said to be the spectrum. And this spectrum, if you consider, the electromagnetic spectrum, if you consider, there won't be any sharp boundary line between any two kind of radiations. That means between radio waves and microwaves, there won't be any sharp boundary. So that means I cannot say that from this frequency to this frequency, only microwaves will be there. Like that, I cannot say because microwaves can extend even into the radio waves and microwaves can extend even into the infrared radiation. Similarly, visible light radiations, visible light can extend even to infrared radiation and some part into the UV radiation. As there is no sharp boundary, electromagnetic spectrum is an example for impure spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum is example for EM spectrum is example for which spectrum is impure spectrum. They may ask, give an example for impure spectrum. The example for impure spectrum is electromagnetic spectrum. Simply we can say. Now, that means uh, uh, just like it is the case of when a white light is passed through a prism, you will be getting a spectrum. That spectrum is an example for what? An impure spectrum. Rainbow is an example for impure spectrum because in a rainbow you can see the different colors, but one color will be overlapping with the another color. Therefore, rainbow is also an example for what? Impure spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum is an example for impure spectrum. Now, I have shown you the spectrum, uh, electromagnetic spectrum here with the different ranges of frequencies. X-rays will be extended from which region to which region of frequency or uh, which wavelength to which wavelength. That is uh, diagrammatically shown here. Just for reference, we can take this chart. From this chart, if you consider, so if you consider, and w first we'll uh, get a relationship between frequency and the wavelength. Suppose the frequency is of the order of 10 power 14. What is the order of wavelength? We know C is equal to from this relation, C is 3 into 10 power 8. That is equal to, suppose if I take the frequency is 10 power 14, then what is the wavelength order? Bring this to this side. Then 10 to the power of 3 into 10 power 8, bring this to this side, 10 power 14. That is equal to how much? 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6. That means when frequency is corresponding to 10, uh, sorry, frequency is corresponding to 10 power 14 hertz, then wavelength corresponds to 10 power minus 6. If frequency corresponds to 10 power 23, then wavelength corresponds to what? Let us consider the highest frequency I have shown here is 10 power 23. Then what is the corresponding wavelength? So according to this formula, C means 3 into 10 power 8. F means 10 power 23 I will take. Then what is lambda? 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 10 power 23. That implies lambda is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of how much you'll be having. Bring this upward. Then 8 minus 10 power 23 is 10 power minus 15. So wavelength should be of the order of 10 power minus 15. Roughly 10 power minus 15. Is it clear? So if you remember this set, no need to remember this set because using that relation, we can get this set of wavelength order. Is it clear? Now, coming to this uh, diagram, if you see carefully, we'll be having the different parts of electromagnetic spectrum. Gamma rays, X-rays, UV rays, visible light, which is an important one, infrared radiations, microwaves, short radio waves, television and frequent FM radio waves, AM radio waves and long radio waves. So if you see the long radio waves, long radio waves will have wavelength, uh, sorry, will have frequency ranging from 1 hertz to 10 power 7 hertz. Whereas the AM radio waves will range from 10 power 7 to 10 power 8 hertz. And television and FM radio waves will have a frequency range ranging from 10 power 8 hertz to 10 power, roughly 10 power 10 hertz. And short radio waves will have a frequency ranging from 10 power 8 hertz to 10 power 12 hertz. In this short radio waves region only, we'll be having the microwaves, and that is ranging from 10 power 10 hertz to 10 power 13 hertz. And this is the region for infrared region. And here, the most important thing that you have to remember is visible light. 
visible light frequency range is of the order of 10 power 14 hertz. What is the frequency range for visible light means it is of the order of 10 power 14 hertz and wavelength will be of the order of 10 power minus 7, 10 power minus 7 meter. Is it clear? This is in meters, this is in hertz. We know that visible light will have a wavelength ranging from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers or 750 nanometers or 800 nanometers roughly. So this can also be written as 4 into 10 power minus 7 meter to 7 into 10 to the power of minus 7 meter which says that the wavelength is of the order of 10 power minus 7 meter for visible light whereas frequency is of the order of 10 power 14 hertz. Is it clear? And UV rays will be ranging from 10 power 14 hertz to 10 power 17 hertz. Whereas X-ray frequency is ranging from 10 power 16 hertz to 10 power 20 hertz. This is only for your reference. So no one will be asking you to draw this chart. Just if you glance this, you will have some idea about the uh, spectrum in which frequency ranges they are falling. For example, gamma rays if you see, they will be falling over the frequency range of 10 power 18 hertz to 10 power 23 hertz. So this is not exactly the exact regions where the gamma rays are lying. It can extend a little above or a little below. That's why electromagnetic spectrum is not a pure spectrum. If I say visible light frequency is of the order of 10 power 14 roughly, it may extend a little above or little below also. Is it clear? But uh, you remember the frequency range for visible light and wavelength range for visible light. It will be from 10 power 14 hertz for frequency and 10 power minus 7 meter for wavelength. And remaining things you can uh, observe here. And now we'll discuss uh, different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum in detail. Uh, suppose if you are knowing the frequency order, we can get the wavelength order using the formula C is equal to nu lambda. What is meant by electromagnetic spectrum? The orderly arrangement of wavelengths or the orderly arrangement of frequency or the orderly arrangement of energy is said to be a spectrum. Is it clear? So just glance it in your textbook. You will be having the clear, uh, clear cut uh, observation. You can uh, see there in the textbook from what range to what range radio waves will be there long radio waves short radio waves microwaves infrared rays are ranging from where to where 10 power 14 hertz to 10 power 13 hertz is it clear that is about the infrared range frequency now we'll discuss about the seven uh, types of electromagnetic radiations that i have noted uh, written here that means about the radio waves microwaves infrared radiation visible light uv rays x rays gamma rays all these things we'll study in detail now coming to the radio waves, what are these radio waves? And in each case we will discuss what is the source of these radio, what is the source of these waves, how to detect these waves, what will be the application of these waves and uh, what is the range of wavelength for these waves we will be discussing in this class. <coughs> now coming to the first one that is about the radio waves. Regarding the radio waves, what are radio waves and how these radio waves will be generated? So radio waves will be generated with the help of either accelerated or decelerated motion of the charges in the aerials. The accelerated or decelerated motion of the charges in the aerials will be responsible for the radio waves. Radio waves are first generated by Marconi and these radio waves are obtained by accelerating or decelerating the charged particles in the aerials. And coming to these radio waves, it can have a frequency range from 500 kilohertz to 1000 megahertz. 1000 megahertz. This is the frequency range for radio waves. 500 kilohertz to 1000 megahertz is the frequency range for radio waves and how these radio waves are generated by the accelerated or decelerated motion of the charged particles in the aerials means antennas and second thing is the am radio waves if i consider am band the frequency range for am band am in the stands stands for amplitude modulated wave what is this value means it will extend from 530 kilohertz to 530 kilohertz to 1,710 kilohertz. <coughs> the radios using AM bands will have a frequency varying from 510 kilohertz to 1710 kilohertz. These will be asked in the board examination. Short band, short band waves, short band wave will have 
the frequency is up to 54 megahertz. Up to 54 kilo, uh, 54 megahertz, short band, uh, short band waves will be there. And coming to the television, coming to the television, the frequency band will range from 54 megahertz to 54 megahertz to 890 megahertz. Important. What is the frequency range for television? Frequency range for television ranges from 54 megahertz to 890 megahertz. And what is the range of amplitude modulated band? The frequency varies from 530 kilohertz to 1,010 kilohertz. And finally, FM band waves. FM in the sense frequency modulated. AM stands for amplitude modulated wave and FM stands for frequency modulated wave. We'll study all these uh, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, phase modulation in the case of communication system. So frequency modulated band of waves, if I consider, its frequency ranges from 88 megahertz to 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. That means if I say 93.5 FM, 93.5 refers to what? 93.5 megahertz. Is it clear or not? So these things will be asked in the one mark questions of board syllabus. What is the range of radio waves? The range of radio waves varies from 500 kilohertz to 1000 megahertz. What is the frequency range for amplitude Mod amplitude modulated waves, 530 kilohertz to 1710 kilohertz. What is the range of short band waves? The range of short band waves varies up to 54 megahertz. What is the range of television band or bandwidth of television waves? Bandwidth of television waves varies from 54 megahertz to 890 megahertz. And the frequency band will vary from free FM. FM band varies from 800 megahertz to 108 megahertz. So all these things will be important for the one mark questions. So radio waves will be generated by accelerating or decelerating the charges in the aerials. And uh, the radio waves will be used for the, in the communication system we are using the radio waves. Either in the television communication or in the uh, mobile communication or in the uh, radio communication, radio waves will be much useful. And these radio waves can also be used in the cellular communication that is in mobile communication. In the case of mobile communication, we will be using the frequency is called as ultra high frequency for a mobile con communication. Which frequency radiation we are using? Ultra high frequency band we will be using. UHF stands for ultra high frequency. This is about the radio waves and how these radio waves will be detected. Radio waves, waves can be detected by what means? These will be detected with the help of receivers aerials. Receiver aerials are used to detect the radio waves. Receivers aerials means the antennas. The receiving antennas will be helpful in detecting the radio waves. If you see olden days radios, there will be an antenna. If the antenna is vertical like this, some radios will have an antenna like this and some radios will have an antenna like this. Suppose there is a radio, uh, a radio with an antenna or with upward antenna like this. Then it can receive the signal when the antenna is kept vertically upward like this. Suppose the antenna is kept horizontal, you cannot receive the signal. That means only when it is like this, it can receive the frequency corresponding to the frequency of oscillator in this one. So that is how at resonance only the radio waves will be, radios will be working, okay? So receiver aerials uh, will be useful for detecting the radio waves. And now coming to the next one, that is about the microwaves. After radio waves, the next one is microwaves. What is this microwaves means? The microwaves will be having a frequency of the order of microwaves, if I consider microwaves. These microwaves will be used in the domestic purpose because we have seen in uh, many of the bakeries, we can see the microwave ovens, which are used to uh, heat up the bakery items. For example, a puff if you want to purchase, it will be baked first. So in the microwave oven, if it is kept, it will become hot within a few seconds of time. So in a microwave oven, microwaves will be used. The microwaves will be used in the radar communication system. In the radar system, 
for uh, aeroplane uh, communicate when the aeroplanes are moving we will be using the radars for detecting the uh, aeroplanes and these uh, microwaves will also be useful in the speed guns they will be useful in the speed guns speed gun means what a speed gun is one which is used to check uh, how fast a uh, uh, service done that means uh, how fast a tennis ball is uh, uh, kicked or how fast a bowler has uh, bowled the ball or how fast a punch is done all these things if you want to uh, find out we can use a speed gun or in uh, we will be using in the <coughs> national highways we will be seeing the interceptors so interceptors will be there the police interceptors will be there which can detect the speed of the automobile so the speed of automobile can be detected with the help of these radio microwaves so microwaves will, will be used in the radar system radar in the sense radio detection and ranging so in the radar system we can use the microwaves in domestic purpose we can use the radio waves uh, as a microwave oven first we'll see the how the working of a microwave oven will be in a microwave oven we'll be using uh, what we'll be using a food item we'll be keeping that food item generally consisting of water molecules and these water molecules will vibrate for a frequency equal to 10 power uh, sorry 3 into 10 power 12 hertz that means 3 giga h 3 giga h so what is the frequency of oscillation of the water molecule means it is of the order of 3 giga h if the frequency of the microwave matches with the frequency of motor molecule, water molecule then the water molecule will be under resonance state at resonance it will receive the energy of the microwave and it will be heated up when it is here directly it is getting heated up so that is how directly the energy of the microwave is received by the water molecule and it will heat up and correspondingly it will also heat the food molecules so most of the food molecules will be consisting of what water component and microwave is generating a wave whose frequency of the order of gigahertz and water molecule frequency is also of the order of gigahertz as the two frequencies are matching the water molecule will be in the resonating state therefore its energy will increase and it will be heated up easily so in this one if you see the ordinary way in the uh, ordinary way of cooking the food particle there will be a container in which you will be keeping the food particle when you are heating it first what happens first container will heat up and then from container to the uh, food particle the heat is to be flown some of the heat is wasted for the heating up of container here because in this case first container is to be heated in general cases later food will be heated but in a microwave oven there won't be any requirement of container heating directly the water molecule will receive, will receive the microwaves that's why in a microwave oven the important caution that we need to take is it the food particle should not be kept in a steel container it must be kept in a porcelain container because porcelain cannot uh, will have a very less frequency compared with the microwave frequency therefore porcelain cannot re receive the microwaves only the water molecules in the food particle food will receive the frequency and directly it will be heated up and in a very small amount of time the food will be cooked is it clear that's why in a microwave oven what we are using microwaves will be used and what is the source of these microwaves microwaves will be produced with the help of clistrons clistron valve clistron valve clistron valve or magnetron or magnetron magnetron and clistron valve will be used for the production of microwaves and where these microwaves will be useful in the radar system we can use the microwaves and in turn they can also be used for the uh, detecting the speed of automobiles or uh, the services of the shuttle all these things we can find out the we can use the gun uh, guns speed guns we'll be calling them and uh, the another source for microwaves is gun diodes gun diodes or other sources of microwaves this is about the microwaves and the next coming to the next one is infrared radiations the infrared radiations will be generally produced by the infrared radiations if you consider these infrared radiations will be generally produced by hotter bodies any hot body is responsible for production of infrared radiations therefore they are also called as thermal radiations and the infrared radiations will be used in many of the electronic appliances in, a, in the case of any electronic appliance for uh, checking whether the appliance is working or not there will be a led of red color 
suppose in your TV uh, remote or any other remotes, we'll be using a LED. When you, <coughs> when the LED is glowing, it is uh, giving the signal. That means the radiation coming from that LED is nothing but infrared radiation. And infrared radiations will be detected by the snakes. Infrared radiations can be easily detected by whom? Snakes. So, the infrared, some, the visible capacity of some animals will be there in infrared radiation. And a, one such example is snake. Snake can visualize the infrared radiation. And infrared radiations are produced by which kind of devices? They will be produced by hotter bodies. And they can be detected with the help of thermopiles or bolometer. Thermopile is a device or bolometer is a device. Thermopile, bolometer, these are the devices which are used to detect the infrared radiations. Okay, any hot body is responsible for producing the infrared radiations. Okay, and these infrared radiations will be useful in the field of medicine for some pain therapies. In order to relieve the patients from some kind of pains, we can use the infrared radiations. And next coming is visible light, which is most important one. Visible light wavelength ranges from 750 nanometers to, or 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers. This is the range of visible light. And this is not the sharp boundary, because visible light can extend even into the infrared radiation or to the a small part of UV radiation. It depends upon the person, as well as uh, it depends upon the animal that we are choosing. And in visible light, if you consider, the visible light is only responsible for, our, for, uh, for getting the information across the world. Nowadays, the science is, uh, uh, sci uh, science is uh, developed means that is only because of the visible radiation. We are studying about different things means that is only because of visible radiations. We are seeing these things around us means because of what? Visible radiation. And visible radiation is produced by the de-excitation of the electrons from higher energy levels to the lower energy levels. In an atom, if you consider, when electron make transition from higher level to the lower level, they will emit radiation. If that radiation is of the, is in the frequency range of 10 power 14 hertz, then we can get the visible light. This visible light will be produced by sun. Sunlight is an example for visible light. The light produced by our uh, uh, bulbs in the house, houses are example for visible light. And coming to the next one is UV radiation. The UV radiations are the high, energ uh, high energetic radiation compared with the visible radiation. And these UV radiations are dangerous compared with the other kind of uh, radiations like radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiations. Compared with these radiations, UV radiations will be harmful for the human beings. Because if you see the uh, source of UV radiation, this will be produced by high energetic hotter bodies or uh, the sun radiations. The radiations coming from the sun will be consisting of UV radiations in much amount. But most of the UV radiations will be, ab will be absorbed by the ozone layer which is the protective cover for the earth. Because of the ozone layer only, the U UV radiations will be blocked and they are not allowed uh, uh, into the earth atmosphere. Only a part of UV, rad UV radiations will be entering into the earth atmosphere. When these UV radiations falls on the, high energetic UV radiations falls on the human beings, they will be responsible for the production of more amount of melanin. So, more amount of UV radiations when they fall on the human body, they will produce more amount of melanin. And because of this one, there will be a taining of skin. So, taining of skin is because of the melanin production in more amount, which is because of the UV radiation that is falling on our body. And these UV radiations will be useful for killing some of the some of the germs or the, some of the insects in the waters. That's why in a water purifiers, you will be having UV radiated filters. The UV radiated filters will be useful for killing the the UV radiated uh, filters will be useful for killing the bacteria present in the water. That's why UV radiations can be used in the killing of bacteria. And these UV radiations can be detected with the help of photographic films and photo cells, is it clear? And they, there will be some advantages are there as, as well as there are some disadvantages. Because of UV radiations, what happens? Some, uh, uh, it is causing the taining of the skin and because of this UV radiations, uh, some of the germs will be affected or some of the insects can be killed. And the UV radiations are having, uh, they can be used in killing of some of the uh, <coughs> cells which are not required for the, uh, for the human beings. And this UV radiations are useful, is useful in what? 
they will be useful in uh, the filters. And coming to the next one, X-rays. These X-rays will be familiar with the X-rays. X-rays are discovered by whom? Ronjen. Ronjen has uh, discovered the X-rays and these X-rays will be useful for what purpose? They will be useful for taking the X-ray photographs when with using those X-ray photographs we are able to find out the, uh, the fractures in the bones or fractures in different parts of our body. So that, uh, that can be tested with the help of X-rays. And these X-rays are also helpful for what purpose means in the study of uh, crystal structures. X-ray diffraction is a method in order to identify the structure of the crystals. So in the field of science, we can use the X-rays for finding out the structures of crystals. In the field of medicine, we can use the X-rays in order to find the fractures in the bones. And these X-rays are high energy compared with the UV radiations. Therefore, they will be used uh, in the treatment of killing off some of the types of cancer cells. And these are X-rays are more sharp compared with the UV radiations. Therefore, they can be used for <coughs> uh, killing off some of the cancer cells also. And if you consider the UV radiations, in the UV radiations, they, they can be produced even by the electric arc. Welding persons will be using the electric arc for melting of the metals or for welding purpose or for cutting the metal, we can, they, they are using the UV radiations. And as they will cause harm for the human, human eyes, they have to wear, the welders must wear the UV glasses because they will, he, uh, they, when they directly fall on the eye, they will uh, affect the retina of our eye. That's why UV radiations will be dangerous. Therefore, while you are uh, <coughs> want to see the UV radiation, we should not see them directly. Welders has to use the welding glasses while they are uh, uh, welding the metals. Is it clear? And next is about the last one is gamma rays. The high energy radiations are nothing but gamma rays. These gamma rays will be generally produced by what means? They will be produced by high, the radioactive decay. Because of the radioactive decay, we will be having the gamma radiations. And they will be more sharp compared with the UV radiations and X-rays. And gamma rays will be used for the treatment of cancer. Okay. This is how the different radiations will be useful in different parts. And there will be advantages of these radiations as well as disadvantages of these radiations. Finally, I will give you a tabular column which can uh, tell you wavelength range, the generation of these radiations or the production of these radiations and uh, the detection of these radiations we will discuss with the help of a chart. Okay. <clears throat> Once look here, I will draw the chart here representing the production of radiations, type of radiation, wavelength range, production and detection of those radiations. See here carefully. So what we are going to discuss means, we are going to discuss a tabular column which can tell about the type of radiation, the wavelength range, the production of that radiation and the detection detection of that radiation so that we can easily remember all the type of radiations here. First one is I will take the type of radiation, type of radiation, <coughs> how to produce that radiation that means first sorry wavelength range, wavelength range, next is about the production production and last one is detection, how to produce that and how to detect it, detection of that radiation. So what are the different radiations that we are having? First one is radio wave, radio wave. Second one is microwave, third one is in the increasing order of their frequency, I am writing radio wave, microwave, infrared radiation, infrared radiation, infrared, infrared wave, <coughs> IR wave, visible light, visible light wave, visible light wave. Next is UV radiation, UV radiation or UV wave. And next, X-ray and last one is gamma ray, gamma ray. Now, 
what is the wavelength range of this radio wave? The wavelength range of radio wave is greater than 0.1 meter. The waves having wavelength more than 0.1 meter will come under radio wave. And the wavelength range of microwave will vary from 0.1 meter to 1 millimeter. 0.1 meter to 1 millimeter. And infrared waves will have a wavelength range from 1 millimeter to 700, sorry, 400, uh, sorry, sorry, ma, 700 nanometer. And visible light vary from 700 nanometer to 400 nanometer, 400 nanometer. Whereas the UV radiations will vary from 400 nanometer to 400 nanometer to 1 nanometer. This is 1 nanometer. And X-rays varies from 1 nanometer to 10 power minus 3 nanometer. And the gamma rays will have a wavelength less than 10 power minus 3 nanometer. Is it clear? You can remember them logically. We know about the visible light. Visible light ranges from 700 nanometer to 400 nanometer. So you see here, radio waves will have a wavelength greater than 0.1 meter and next is microwaves will have wavelength ranging from 0.1 meter to 1 millimeter, bring this 1 millimeter here. Then infrared waves will have a wavelength from 1, ma 1 millimeter to 700 nanometer. For visible light we know 700 to 400 nanometer and 400 comes here, therefore UV rays radiation varying from 400 nanometers to 1 nanometer. And this 1 nanometer you bring here, X-rays will have a wavelength range ranging from 1 nanometer to 10 power minus 3 nanometer and the wavelengths less than 10 power minus 3 nanometer comes under gamma rays. So these are the high energetic radiation or low wavelength ranges. And this is uh, radio waves are low energetic and high wavelength. And coming to the production, how the radios, radio waves will be produced? They will be produced with the help of what? The acceleration and deceleration of the charged particles in the aerials. Due to the acceleration and a deceleration of acceleration and deceleration of charges in aerials. Deceleration of charges in aerials. This is the reason for the production of the radio waves. And how these microwaves will be produced means microwaves can be produced with the help of devices like clistron, clistron, magnetron, clistron, magnetron and gun diodes and gun diodes, gun diodes. Using these devices we can produce the microwaves. Then how these infrared radiations can be produced? The infrared radiations can be produced because of the vibrations of vibrations of atoms and molecules, atoms and molecules. When we make the atoms or molecules to vibrate, then infrared radiations will be produced. When electrons are made to accelerate, we can get the radio waves or when the charges are made to accelerate, we can get the radio waves. But when atoms and molecules are made to vibrate, we can produce the infrared radiations. And visible light can be obtained. How the visible light can be obtained means, in an atom, when electron jumps from one level to the lower energy level, they will emit the radiation. And if those radiations are in this wavelength range or frequency range, we will get the visible light. So, due to the transition of electron, due to transition of electron from higher level to lower level, higher level to lower level in an atom, we can get the <coughs> visible light. In Bohr's atomic model we have studied, Balmer series, Lyman Balmer, in the Balmer series we have a transition of the electron from higher shell to the lower shells. Now visible light, UV radiation, UV radiations will take place when electron jumps from one energy level to the innermost shells. So from a given energy level to the innermost shell, if electron make a transition, we'll be getting the UV radiation. Jumping of electron to 
jumping of electron to innermost shell innermost shells is responsible for producing the uv radiation then how these x rays are produced x rays will be produced by kicking out an electron from the innermost shell or using that a heavy target when a heavy target is uh, bombarded with the or a heavy metal is uh, made to bombard with the fast moving electrons then they will kick out the innermost electrons giving out the x rays so when the innermost electrons are made to kick out from the atom then you will be getting the x rays and how the gamma rays will be produced gamma rays will be produced because of the radioactive decay due to radioactive decay due to radioactive decay we can have the gamma radiations then what are the things that are used for detecting these radiations how to detect the radio wave how to detect a microwave how to detect an infrared wave how to detect visible uv rays x rays and gamma rays the radio waves can be detected with the help of receivers aerial receiver aerials receiver aerials will be used for detecting of the radio waves and how to detect the microwaves microwaves will be detected with the help of photo con contact diode contact diode photo contact diode is used for detecting of the microwaves and how to detect the infrared radiations means infrared radiation will be detected with the help of thermopiles thermopiles bolometers bolometers or ir photographic films ir photographic films ir photographic films these things can be used for detecting the infrared radiation how to detect the infrared infrared radiation using thermopile we can detect or we using a bolometer we can detect the infrared radiation or infrared photographic films are used for detecting of the infrared radiation and how to detect the visible light we know we can detect the visible light out with our human eye the eye the eye is useful for detecting the visible light and we can also use photo cells photo cells and photographic films photographic films photographic films these things can be used for detecting the visible light then what is used for detecting the uv radiation it is detected with the help of photo cells and photographic films photo cells and photographic films photographic films okay then what are used for detecting the x rays photographic films this is what i am writing here excluding photo cells photographic films photographic films can be used for detecting of the x rays and they can also be detected with the help of what ionization chamber ionization chamber photographic film ionization chamber can be used or a geiger counter geiger counter these are the devices which are used for detection of x rays as well as gamma rays both x rays and gamma rays can be detected with the help of photographic films ionization chamber and geiger counter these are the devices which are used for detection of x rays as well as the gamma rays this is a tabular column that we have to remember for the quick understanding of the electromagnetic spectrum okay and one more thing is in this case we have to study about one term that is called lasik what is lasik means lasik is a therapy which is used for the eye surgery lasik stands for lasik stands for laser assisted laser assisted laser assisted in cyto keratomelius so lasik operations will be done for the eye surgery and that lasik refers to what lasik refers to laser assisted in cytokeratomelasis so laser assisted in cytokeratomelasis is nothing but lasik uh, lasik eye operations will be done 
and that is coming under the UV, uh, these X-rays or UV rays case. Okay, this is about your electromagnetic spectrum. Thank you.